So you're gearing up for the Super Bowl Wimbledon World Cup, and you're thinking about getting a new TV to watch it in all its glory. I like it, great idea, but a great idea needs an equally great plan. So don't go buy that new TV for the big game until you watch this video. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and if you're new around here, I review TVs and stuff. Actually, it's a little more complicated than that, but I think it's safe to say that I know a few things about TVs, sports, and watching sports on TVs. I get asked a lot of questions throughout the year, like what's the best TV for sports? And what's important to look for when buying a TV if I watch mostly sports? And hey, Caleb, where'd you get that sweater? Also, uh, I'm at the store right now and I'm about to buy this big TV. And am I about to make a really big mistake? Which by the way, I'll never be able to respond to that question in time. So probably just don't ask. But I get these questions most often right around the middle of January because there's this big TV commercial event that happens in February, and they also sprinkle in some exciting football in there just for fun. Kind of a big deal here in the US. Anyway, let's talk about what makes one TV better than another for watching sports, what to look for and what to ignore when shopping for a new TV, and also why anyone who says that buying a TV just for sports is dumb probably means well, but is also like totally wrong. And hey, before we get to it, if you like what you see, maybe slap a like on this video or even subscribe if you wanna see more. Also, if you have lingering questions, drop a comment down below and I'll do what I can to answer it. But if I don't, there's a good chance one of my fellow Knit Nerds can. Knit Nerds is a, uh, you know what? I'll explain that another time. Let's talk about sports TVs. So I think all of us have been to a sports bar or maybe even a friend's house and watched a game and thought, you know, that doesn't look great. Or maybe it was your house that you were watching a game and thought that doesn't look great. Anyway, if you thought that, it might have been because the picture was blurry or maybe the picture looked dim or it looked splotchy or the colors just seemed way off. Naturally, you don't want any of that in your new TV. I mean, you don't have to be a video file to see that a screen looks dirty or your team's colors seem way off. Bad just looks bad. So let's talk about how to find a TV that will not have any of those four poor attributes, starting with one of the most obvious and annoying blurriness. There are three things that can cause a blurry or smeared picture when watching fast moving sports. One is slow pixel response time, where the pixels just don't react quickly enough to the changing instructions from the TV. Another is a mismatch between the frame rate of the content and the refresh rate of the TV. That's how many times per second it draws a picture on the screen. And the third is poor motion processing. The brains of the TV are just not that sharp, not the sharpest tool in the shed is what I mean. Often though, a blurry picture is caused by all three of those things happening at the same time. And the most common cause for that is that the TV is, well, it's cheap. And I don't mean that it's just inexpensive, a concept by the way that is very relative, but I mean it is of generally poor build quality, flimsy, cheap parts, just you get it, it's cheap, right? Now to be clear, you can get a good quality TV at a low price. For instance, the 65 inch TCL 5 series, that's a pretty solid TV. It works just fine for sports, good even. It's 550 bucks. That's a really good price to performance ratio for a 65 inch TV. So if you spend under $400 for a 65 inch TV, it's gonna be cheap and you probably won't love the way it looks for sports. Now, if we keep using the TCL 5 series as an example, it does sports well thanks to good pixel response time and good processing. Two out of the three that I just talked about, right? Even though it doesn't have a 120 hertz panel, it does a solid job with the 60 hertz panel that it does have thanks to decent processing. By the way, those of you in the UK or Australia, that would be 50 hertz or 100 hertz. So just keep that conversion in mind for the next bit here. Which brings me to my next point. You don't have to get a TV with a 120 hertz panel in order for it to be good for sports. Like I said, the TCL 5 series does great with the 60 hertz panel, but it's not a bad idea for a 120 hertz panel to be a baseline requirement. Now, I don't wanna to get too deep into the tech weeds of why here, that's a different video, but the takeaway I do want you to have is that 120 hertz panels don't go into cheap TVs. TVs with 120 hertz panels need more expensive hardware to support them. So in other words, that 120 hertz spec is an indicator of quality, and it can provide some assurance that the TV is gonna be a pretty good one. Here's the catch 
catch though. I'm sorry, there's always a catch. It has to be a 120 hertz native panel. And I mentioned that distinction because TV brands are out there trying to trick you. If you see 120 hertz clear motion rate or 240 hertz motion flow or some other such nonsense, that's the TV maker trying to trick you. Look at a spec sheet, make sure it says 120 hertz panel because the better panel is the indicator that it's a better TV. Yes, it's worth the hassle taking a look at a spec sheet. Look, if you go up to the salesperson on the show floor and you ask them if the TV you're looking at has 120 hertz native panel and they look over at the box to check, that means they don't know and they are relying on the same BS information on the side of the box that you would be. So get on the internet and check. It's worth the 30 second or so it'll take to do it. Now, the last thing I wanna say about motion, and I'm making a big deal about the motion because it's one of the biggest issues when watching sports, but the last thing I'll say about it is that if you're okay with motion smoothing, that's frame interpolation, the stuff they call motion flow or smooth motion or whatever, that's fine. You can use it and you won't get a blurry picture, but just be aware that some people think it makes things look fake or two-dimensional. It's the kind of thing that's almost always turned on on the TV in your hotel room, and it has sort of a soap opera look to it. If you're good with that, then almost any decent TV with that feature turned on is gonna be able to make fast-looking sports look clear. But if you hate that look and you don't wanna get it, get a TV with a 120 hertz panel and just be safe. Okay, enough about motion, what else should you be looking for? Well, let's talk visibility. You want the picture to be bright and clear, right? Now, most TVs on the market today get plenty bright enough. The thing you should be aware of is how reflective the screen might be. If you have a lot of light coming into the room from windows when you watch, or if you have a lot of lamps or some other light source behind you when you're watching TV, I'm thinking neon signs in your game room, right? There's a good chance that if your TV is too reflective, that bright light is going to kind of wash out the picture and become a distraction. Again, this is only a concern for certain viewing situations, but they're pretty common. And I mention it because it's basically the only factor that could make an OLED TV not just like the best option, which let's just address that right now. The best TV for watching sports in almost all cases is an OLED TV. Instant pixel response time. They all have 120 hertz panels. They are all very nice TVs. So the motion processing and upscaling is about the best you can get from any TV. OLEDs rule for sports, unless super bright light is coming into your room from an angle that would cause the glossy screen on that OLED TV to act like a mirror. Otherwise, OLED all day, every day. But for the rest of you looking at LED, LCD, or QLED TVs, just a couple more things to be aware of on the TV side of things. And then I wanna talk about how you can go about watching the game and how that can make a difference too. So the next thing to check for is screen uniformity. What you don't want is a splotchy screen. And unfortunately, you're not gonna know whether or not you've got a splotchy screen until you get the TV home. Yes, sometimes getting the best TV for you can be a hassle and I'm sorry that's the case, but get the TV home, plug it in. You don't wanna get it all set up or wall mounted yet. Just connect it to the internet so you can stream YouTube and then stream one of the screen uniformity test clips that I'm linking down to in the description below. If you see really bad splotchiness, I mean, if it just looks like someone spilled grease all over your brand new white or gray t-shirt here, then that TV has major screen uniformity problems and you will see those splotches when watching football, golf, hockey, or anything else with big wide areas of consistent color. If you wanna know more about dirty screen effect, I've actually got a video about that too. And finally, we land on the last picture quality element and that is color. It's so easy to see bad color on a TV when watching sports. Now, fortunately, the fix for bad color on a TV is usually just a matter of not using the vivid or sports picture mode. I know it sounds stupid since I know that you want your TV to look vivid and you're watching sports, so why wouldn't you use those picture modes? The answer is because they are hot trash when it comes to color. They sacrifice just about everything about picture quality to make sure that the picture is just bright AF. And honestly, a big reason brands do this is because they need to stand out among a crowd of TVs with a bunch of fluorescent lights beaming down from the ceiling. So try picking the standard picture mode if you must, or use something like ISF Bright or the cinema or movie preset. 
and then pump up the backlight. This will make sure that you get a brighter picture while also maintaining color accuracy. And I think you'll be happier in the long run. So that's the cheat sheet for finding a good TV for sports. 120 hertz panel is a great start. Make sure it has decent anti-glare or anti-reflectant on the screen if you watch in bright environments. And when you get it home, check for dirty screen effect and exchange it if you happen to get a bad one, which really doesn't happen all that often, as I've gathered. And then when you do get it set up, avoid the vivid or sports picture modes. Now, what about how you watch or get the game? Are streaming apps better than cable? What about using an antenna? So in my experience, one of the most common ways to watch sports is also one of the worst in terms of picture quality, and that would be cable or satellite. Now, if the only way you have to watch is cable or satellite, then, I mean, obviously watch that way. But if you're able to stream the game or match, you might want to go that direction for a few different reasons. Also, if the game is going to be on a big network like ABC, NBC, CBS, or Fox, then you might want to try picking up one of your local broadcast stations with an antenna. The reason either one of those options will probably look at least a little bit better than cable or satellite comes down to a couple factors. The biggest one is compression. Cable and satellite operators have to cram a ton of signal down a pretty small pipe. Even if you have fiber-based cable with loads of bandwidth, cable operators are usually still sending that same bundled compressed signal down the same pipe. So it's highly compressed so it'll fit. And lower bit rate and bit depth mean less pixel information and less color information. And that just means your picture isn't as good as it could be. Don't get me wrong, cable and satellite can look very good, but streaming, if you have a solid connection and good bandwidth, can look even better. Now for streaming, if you're gonna use a live TV streaming app with a bunch of different channels, like my experience has been YouTube TV has been reliably solid for picture quality, but the better play would be to use the network's own streaming app, like the Fox Sports app. In fact, sometimes you'll get an HDR signal that way, but don't expect 4K. And if you do get 4K, just know that it's upscaled 1080p at best, which honestly is still better than the 720p or 1080i signal that you'd normally get from your cable or satellite provider. Also, using an antenna, as old school as it may sound, can also be a good move to get better picture quality. It's also less compressed than cable and it's free. Plus, if you happen to live in a market where ATSC 3.0 broadcasts are live, it might even look just that much better. That hasn't been my experience here in Portland, Oregon, but your market might be different. So there you go, some advice on what's really important if watching sports is your first priority. And the bonus is a TV that's great for sports tends to be a great TV for just about anything else that you like to watch. Thanks as always for watching everyone. I hope this video has been helpful and I think one of the best ways to hone in on some specific models of TVs is to check out our reviews and hit up others in the comments to hear what their experiences have been like. So like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.